Hi, in this video we're going to look at building very basic graphical applications in Python. So, so far what all we've done is make command line interface applications. So these are applications that just print out plain text to the Python shell or um, some other command line interface. And that's in stark contrast to what we're used to nowadays um, working with on computers where we have nice graphical interfaces where you can click on things and um, things like that and it's not so boring as just plain text. So the way we're going to do this is by using something called TK Enter or TK Enter and this is something that comes packaged with most Python installations and it's kind of the most common way to make graphical user interfaces or GUIs in Python. Um, and so to import this library, we're going to say from tkenter import star. And as you know, we could do like import tkenter. It's the same thing, but we're going to have to do extra typing every time we want to use a function from this module. So we're just going to ignore that. So t this is this stands for TK interface. Um, TK is sort of a toolkit for building graphical applications. It's written in a language called C, and this is just like a wrapper interface that, that exposes some of that to Python so we can use it to build these graphical applications pretty easily. Um, now, there's so many, there are other modules that are available, other libraries that are available to make graphical applications. There's tons of them. And even within um, the Tkenter module, there's so much to it and we could spend an enormous amount of time covering all the different things you can do with this and all the flexibility so I'm just gonna barely scratch the surface with some very basic simple programs um, and then later on if you want you can definitely dive into this and go as deep as you want and learn all about all the different things you can do with it but we're just gonna scratch the surface just so you can say you can write a simple graphical program and everything you do isn't just uh, boring old lines of text, right? And you can even make games with this, um, but there's other modules that are a little bit more amenable to doing that sort of thing. Um, so I might not recommend using Tkinter to make a game, but you could definitely do it if you wanted. All right, so let's jump in. We're, this is going to be the first line we use. Um, and the first thing we're going to do, I'm going to make, um, kind of make the window. So I'm going to call I'm going to say master, that's just the name, uh, you can name this anything you want, it's just a variable. And I'm going to use this TK on the right, that's going to create the window. And basically all we're going to do is add widgets to the window. So there's lots of different widgets available. Um, there's things like buttons, text labels, checkboxes, menus, and so on that we can add. And so our window is just going to get a bunch of widgets added to it and that's how we're going to build up the, the graphical application. So we're just going to start out simple. I'm going to add a text label I think and we'll see how how that goes. So I'm going to say how about label 1 equals and then label and I'm going to tell it where I want it to go. I want it to attach to this master window and I'm just going to tell it the text I want. So it's going to say hello world and then I need to do what's called packing the label. is isn't necessary, but it's nice. And I'm going to do main loop. So let me show you a couple things. So we did this from tkinter import star. If we did just import tkinter, this comes from that library, the tk. So we'd have to say like tkinter.tk. That's why we imported star. So we imported all of these uh, module functions and stuff into our current namespace. So we don't have to worry about that. So th this TK is from there, label is from there, um, and main loop, those are all coming from Tkinter, okay? So let's just run this um, and take a look at what it looks like. So save and run, and it's a little bit off the screen. So let me drag it onto the screen here. I have, to, I have to expand the window because I can't grab it. Um, so it started out looking much smaller like this, and that's a result of the packing of the window. So what we got here is just a simple window, and it's got this label. It's just the text of the label is Hello World, and it's drawn on the screen here. All right, fair enough. Um, we can do other things. Uh, just so you know, there's different what are called layout managers that help you lay out content in the window so that when it gets resized, it dynamically 
uh, repositions all the elements in the window. Um, and we're just kind of using the default one to start. But there's also a grid layout managers where everything's kind of in a grid and you specify like what part of the grid it's in. And there's all kinds of things you can do. There's so much depth to this. And we're just, like I said, you know, s stick with simple stuff. All right, so now I'm going to try adding a button. Instead of label here, I'm going to go button. And I'm going to give the button an action to perform. So I'm going to do that by using the command argument here. And I'm just going to say the command is going to be hello. So this refers to, in this case, it's going to refer to a function that is yet to be written. So I'm going to define my function, define hello. And all this function is going to do is print out hello. This function could do lots of different stuff. But this is just the simplest, you know, anything you want the function to do, it could do. So if I run this now, instead of a label, it's going to be a button. And again, I have to kind of expand the window so that I'm able to move it, but it starts out smaller. And when I click this button down here in the shell, I'm getting hello. So I'm clicking the button, calls this function. It's basically what's going on there, okay? And every time I click it, it gets called again. So it's, I've clicked it a bunch of times. So something else cool we might be able to do with this, just something kind of off the top of my head here that I'm thinking of, is we could make it kind of move around when we click it. How do we try that? So instead of, oh, and I shouldn't really call this label 1 anymore. I'm just going to call it B for button. And I'm going to say B.place, and I'm going to decide where it's going to go in the window. So I'm going to say the relative X position. You don't have to follow this. This is just like kind of a fun example that I just thought of. Um, relative Y position, 0.5. And I'm going to anchor it to the center of the window. And let's see, instead of hello, I'm going to call this jump. And I'm going to do a from random. And I'll, I'll kind of explain what I'm doing here in a second. Import star so you can follow along here if you want. And then I'm going to call this jump instead. And what I'm going to do is every time you click the button, I'm going to randomly reposition it. So this relative X and relative Y, that's a value between... 0 and 1 that's saying if 1 is 100% like all the way at the bottom or all the way to the right then this would be halfway so it'd be right now the button should be in, start out in the middle of the window what I'm gonna do is randomly um, place it so I'm gonna say b.place and then I'm gonna go relative x is gonna be random because I imported everything from random and this returns a floating point value between 0 and 1 and relative y is also going to be random. And let's try that out. So I'll run it. Let's see. So my idea here, if this works, is when I click this, it should jump around the window. And indeed it does. Um, so that's kind of, you can maybe think about making a game out of that somehow. Kind of neat little thing. Um, not much code, right? All right. So that's fun. Now let's look at another example let me see if i can pull it up here one second i'm just going to copy some code and bring it over yeah i'm going to bring it over to the window over here and i'm just going to copy this i'm not going to go through this myself um just thought it was a good example. So one thing, if you're on Python 3, so the only difference between Python 2 and Python 3 is this T is lowercase. So sometimes, I mean, there's other differences, but I mean, in this code that I copied, that's the only difference. Um, if sometimes you're looking at old code that's from Python 2, you'll notice that the T here at the beginning is uppercase, and that's an indication that it might be a little bit different. So this is going to do the same thing. It's going to build the window, and let's just run this and take a look take a gander at what it looks like. So um, here we go. Here's this window. And what it's doing is you can stylize stuff in the window like you might expect. So I build the window and I add um, this label to root. And this is just something that the author of this code did to space everything out where they en pressed enter and space it out. But you could definitely just kind of do this all in one line if you want. But it's a little bit easier to read how they did it, I guess. But this works too, all in one line. Um, so let me bring back up my TK window here. So uh, the first label has the text red, uh, text and times font, and then it says foreground 
that's what the FG foreground color is red and the font is times and then this one the green Helvet uh, green text and Helvetica font uh, that has this text the foreground color is light green the background color is dark green and then here's the the font arguments Hel Hel Helvetica size 16 bold and italic and we see all that there and then those get packed up and we do the main loop to um, instantiate action listen action listeners and things for the for the window all right so that's just another example um, of stylized text so it's not too intimidating once you break it down we're really just creating labels there and um, in this case it was a little bit kind of weirdly spaced out but simple enough right all right so now let's look at a canvas and this is kind of the last example I'm going to go over here um, but I mean I could spend forever talking about this stuff so um, let's not worry too much about that so I'm going to keep everything in here and I can just make that main loop actually and then inside of here I'm going to go ahead and create what's called a canvas and I'm just going to call it C I'm going to say C equals canvas and then it's going to be attached to the root and the width of the canvas this is measured in pixels so I don't most monitors are called uh, nowadays anyway a lot of them maybe not most um, are 1080p monitors and that's 19 1920 pixels wide and 1080 pixels tall so 1920 by 1080 is that is a resolution of the screen so we're specifying a number of pixels here um, don't worry too much about that if you're not familiar with that stuff but um, definitely something to look into if you want to do more with this so I'm going to just gonna call a width I'm going to say the width of my canvas is going to be 80 for instance and the height is going to be uh, let's go with 40 okay and I'm going to do c.pack and what a canvas is is a widget that you can draw on as its name might suggest canvas you know as an artist you draw on a canvas um, same thing and that's pretty common terminology across most programming languages a canvas uh, is an element of a user interface where you draw things so what I'm going to draw on this canvas for now is just going to be a line so I'm going to say uh, on canvas dot create line and then I'm going to go it wants to know what the coordinate the starting coordinate of the line is going to be and in that case I'm going to say the first X position is going to be zero. That's going to be on the left side of the window. And the Y position is going to be half the height. So if the height was 40, I'm going to make it 20. And I want to draw the X to the right, or I want to draw the line to the right side of the window. So the X position for that is going to be 80. And then the height is going to be the, the same thing. And let's just look at this, and I'll, I'll go back over what that means. So I, I made the window a little bigger, but what's going on here? is here's the canvas it's 80 pixels by 40 pixels the line starts at this point which is the point 0 comma 20 right here oops and the line ends at this point which is the point 80 comma 20 over here and it draws the line that connects those two points um, so we've got a coordinate system that starts the origin of the coordinate system point zero zero is in the top left and going down is increasing y values so here is y equals 20 here is y equals 0 up a little bit higher and going to the right is increasing x values so here is x equals 80 the width of the of the window here so that's a canvas I'm gonna kind of copy some code again and show you a more complicated thing we could draw with such a canvas and I'm just going to run this and then go back and explain what it's drawing here. So here is what this draws. It's drawing, it kind of looks like a 3D perspective, like we're looking into a window or something now. So we've got the canvas again, and we've got a width of 200 and a height of 100, and then we pack the canvas. The canvas is called W in this case. And then we draw some things on the canvas. So we create a rectangle and it's filled so that's this larger outside rectangle this is a way to represent colors it's called hexadecimal um, so 
we don't have to get too much into it. These two numbers represent like how red the color is. These two represent how blue it is, and these two represent how green it is. Um, or sorry, this is blue, and this is green. But that, that that's neither here nor there. That doesn't matter. Um, that's just a way to represent colors. You can also just type a color like green or um, yellow. It doesn't support every color. Like it might not know what periwinkle means or something, but common colors it can support. So we create a rectangle, and we give it coordinates um, of the corners basically and then we create another rectangle that gets drawn on top of that that's this yellow rectangle is this line and then we create a line that is drawn from zero zero which is the top left corner so that's drawing this line here and we create another line that's from zero comma one hundred which is yeah so that's down here that's this line and we draw it like that, and so on. So we create four, two rectangles and four lines drawn as such. We have to specify the coordinates of the corners of the rectangle and the coordinates uh, of the point the line should be drawn from and to. And then that's what we get. So we drew all that on this canvas that's 200 pixels wide and 100 pixels tall. So again, I'm just giving you an idea of how this works and giving you kind of a starting point so that you can understand the very basic structure so that if you want to go into this and look at more of this and learn from tutorials online or whatever source you want to go with that you'll and I'll, I'll post a link to a good website that has a lot of uh, example code that you can you can check out um, but yeah so we're just scratching the surface here I'm just showing you some kind of interesting simple examples and you can definitely check those out and think about um, other things you might want to create with these simple examples. So even with just the button pressing, you can maybe go back and modify some of your programs so that it waits for you to press a button or something. All right, well, thanks for your attention to this video. I know it was a little bit kind of all over the place and confusing, but I just wanted to kind of throw some things out there and, and see what sticks. So uh, that's it. That's all there is uh, for now. Thanks for watching.